Here we go. Mama, watch this. Okay, for a three, long time. three, two, one. <laughs> oh, it is here, the DJI Osmo Action Three, and it is. It is everything that we asked for and, and maybe a little more. DJI is pitching this new action camera as professional and reliable. They're also claiming that it is the most cold resistant action camera ever and that it will not overheat up to 4K 60. Those are, those are bold claims, Cotton. Let's see how they pan out today. This video, by the way, not sponsored by DJI. It is, however, sponsored by Cuts Clothing, my, my very favorite t-shirts. We'll talk a little bit more about them later in the video. Because we're gonna jump right into this camera because there's so much to talk about today. Let's first look at how it's changed physically. We're gonna compare it today to the original Osmo Action 1, and then we'll also kind of compare it to the Action 2. It's not really a, a big comparison against these two. These are meant to coexist. They are, they're different designs. They're meant for different use cases. But actually, before we even jump in, to the the physical changes of this camera let's quickly just hit on the price because because you're gonna want to know the price this camera is 329 dollars i i know i did not expect it to be that low either and then the action combo pack that we're going to talk about today that comes in at 439 dollars and when you see when you see what's in it um, you'll be as surprised as I am that it's only $439. Okay, let's get back to the physical changes from the Osmo Action 1 to the Osmo Action 2. Did you notice though that they brought back the Osmo name? On this guy, they just called it the Action 2, and now, now they brought back the Osmo name. First, you can see that the Osmo Action 3 is quite a bit bigger than the Osmo Action 1 in, in kind of height and width, but then in in thickness, it's not that much bigger because on the Osmo Action 1, we had a really thick lens cover and look how thin they made that lens cover now. You'll also notice on there that it comes with a rubber ring on the lens cover, which is kind of clever because if you've ever had one of these lens covers get stuck, well, on this guy, they gave us this little rubber ring that comes on the lens protector. And having that on there just helps you when you grab it to try to unscrew it. It just gives you way more torque. Little pro tip though, do not leave this on your camera like don't go out with this and and go into the ocean and go into the waves this this will come right off take this off and and keep it in your bag and then when you need to unscrew that lens put this on there and once it's on there you can really get a good grip and speaking of that lens cover it is circular and removable which i love removable lens covers this should be a must on all action cameras because i can buy a few of these keep them in my bag when these get scratched when i hit the concrete because i fell on my skateboard and i fling my action camera uh, this is usually the first thing to get scratched. I just swap that out, put a new one on there, and I'm ready to go. I haven't ruined my action camera. The the circular lens is it's significant. Now, speaking of significant, check out the, the screen on this thing. This screen is way, way brighter, significantly brighter. It was the very first thing that I noticed when I turned this thing on. I would say looking at it, it's it's almost twice as bright of a screen. So you're gonna have no problem with this screen. Oh, front screen and rear screen, super bright but you're gonna have no problem out in the sun with this. That's kind of an issue that I had with the Osmo Action 1 is that the screens were really good, really good to use, great touchscreen, but in the sun, it was a little hard to see. They really weren't bright enough and they, they definitely fixed that on this guy. I'll, I'll compare it to, you know, the other camera soon. Also new on the Osmo Action 3 is that this front screen is also a touch screen. So I can tap in here and I can get to all my settings from the front screen, which is super cool because sometimes you have your camera mounted in a way where you kind of can't get to the rear screen. And if you want to change a setting, you usually have to take it off the mount, do your settings changes and then put it back on the mount. Very cool that they made that touch screen. They also optimize these screens to be used while wet, which is which is shockingly good. Now, it doesn't work underwater. If you're underwater, you still can't use a touchscreen, but you can be underwater as soon as you pop up, start using the touchscreen right away. You know how usually you're like, come on, or you're like trying to wipe your fingers when they're wet. Touch screens are terrible in water, but this one is oddly good. Then also right next to that front touch screen, a really clever little bit. Check out this logo. Do you see how the O kind of looks a little funky? Inside that O, they put a color temperature sensor and exposure meter in, in the O of the logo. And then right next to that, they put two microphones. So this camera can do stereo sound from the front. So while you're walking around talking to your camera, 
camera, you're picking up stereo sound out of those two microphones on the front. Flipping over to the side here, you're gonna see my favorite button ever, the quick switch button. I love the quick switch button. It was originally introduced on the Action One, and then of course other cameras kind of brought in custom settings, but this is a physical button for me to cycle through my favorite setting. Check this out, I press the quick switch button, and just by pressing that button, I can cycle through the five settings that I use most, the settings that I've saved into those five slots. So whether you're wearing gloves or whether you're underwater, you can't use a touch screen, you just press that quick switch button and you can change settings to get to the ones that you use most. I. I love the quick switch button. And then right below that button is the USB-C door. It's a really good door. It's also removable. You'll see why a little bit later in the video. And you'll see that the SD card is no longer underneath that door because they've switched it to the other side inside the battery slot. We switch this up and then the door comes down, just being a little different. And you can see the SD card slot in there and then this battery. Now this battery is something to talk about. This is a 1770 milliamp battery and and it has a few clever tricks. Because this battery, along with what they've done with this camera, is what they're saying makes this the most cold resistant action camera on the market. They claim that at 1080, 30 frames a second, you can put this in negative four degrees Fahrenheit or negative 20 Celsius, and it should last up to 150 minutes. Now, I don't have negative four, but our, our freezer does zero. So I put this in there, threw it on, hit record, and sure enough, the battery ran out before the camera died. And our freezer might only be zero, not negative four, but, but that's good enough for me to prove that, that when I go snowboarding this season, I know that I can bring this camera, I can pull it out no matter how cold it is, and I know it'll turn on and it will record. I'm very stoked to have this in my snowboard jacket this year. And then as for that battery helping with the overheating, we're gonna talk about overheating at the end of the video. But speaking of the battery, this battery and camera can do fast charging. Along with their 30 watt charger, which is sold separately, and a USB-C cable, which does come with the camera, this camera can be charged up to 80% battery in 18 minutes, and then fully charged in 50 minutes. Now, to bring that into kind of perspective here, the top piece of the Action 2 takes 40 45 minutes to charge, and if you charge the two of them together, it takes 90 minutes to charge this thing up. And again, 18 minutes will get you this to 80% battery. That is that is bananas fast and fast charging. I think it might be the first fast charge in an action camera. Now down to the last side of this camera, and down here there's there's two very notable features. The first one is this logo right here. This logo right here is actually a microphone. I know it doesn't seem like it, and it doesn't look like it either. I'm looking. At it and touching it, I don't understand how that's a microphone. But apparently that is a windproof microphone with a non-exposed acoustic holes. I have no idea how that works, but we'll talk more about it in the audio test portion of this video. Because the other really cool thing that you're gonna notice on the bottom is these two notches. And that is for a very similar magnetic mount from the Action 2, but but slightly redesigned. On the Osmo Action 2, we had, we had this guy and it quickly and easily magnetically attached and it's got those two little side hooks on there and it was a it was a good connection it had its flaws but but it was good now the new magnetic mount is this guy and this is a redesigned version of the mount you can see the little rubber bit right there to help hold it in place and this whole thing is actually made out of plastic the crazy thing about this mount though is that it is way stronger than the action 2 so the magnet is stronger how the hooks lock in is even stronger and just all around like there is no way that this one is coming off. Even on the Action 2, I kind of had a complaint in the video that I made of this camera, where if you press one of these hooks and lift it up, so now only one of these is engaged, I can get the camera free from the mount. But on the Osmo Action 3, that, that is not the case. This thing, again, it is so locked in there. And you can see that even when I press one of the buttons, I lift it up, so now we're only attached by one. I still cannot get the camera free. It's only held on by one hook right now, but that hook is so well in there that that I legit cannot get that off, even though one of the hooks has released. And then also of note is that with these new attachments, the Action 2 is not cross compatible. Even though the Action 3 fits on the old Action 2 mount, that fits really nicely. The Action 2 cannot go on the new Action 3 mount. It, it doesn't 
can't lock in. Now let's talk about the waterproofing of this camera because, because lots of people love to take these in the water and lots of divers like to take them diving. And the problem with action cameras is that almost all of them, including the Action 2, are waterproof to 11 meters. So beyond 33 feet, you need to put your action camera into a dive case. And dive cases bring in fog, there gets moisture in there, they're a pain in the butt. Any diver will tell you that. But this camera is now waterproof down to 16 meters or 52.5 feet just just like it is. So for a lot of recreational dives that you might go on, this camera can now go down there, no case needed, no worrying about fogging or anything like that. Just bring the camera like this and you're diving. All right, that's everything physically different with the actual camera. Let's check out the adventure combo pack that they sent over and you'll see You'll see why I'm so excited. First of all, let me take a minute to thank the sponsor of today's video, Cuts Clothing. You guys hear me talk about cuts all the time on this channel. If you're new to the channel, uh, welcome. And hey, Cuts Clothing, they're super dope. I just got two more of my friends to try out this exact shirt. This is the shirt that I think is like the gateway drug to Cuts Clothing. When you buy a Henley short sleeve curve hem, uh, it's got the three buttons here and get the signature fit. I like the signature fit because it's more athletic. They do make a relaxed fit, but the whole point of cuts is that like, they're like really oddly good fitting shirts. Like they're just like, they're a little slim. They're, they're very, my wife likes them. That's the main point with cuts clothing and me. That's the thing that I fell in love with was the very first time I got some cuts. I put one on and my wife went, hey, you look really good. And, and I was wearing a t-shirt. So yeah, I, I fell in love with cuts at that very moment. Get some cuts, first thing in the description, use my code. I guarantee you, if you get this shirt, you will be very, very happy. And thank you Cuts for sponsoring today's video. Okay, back to the Adventure Combo Pack and we're gonna start with the coolest part of the Adventure Combo Pack and it is this guy, the battery charging case. Now I know that doesn't sound like an exciting thing for most people, but this Adventure Combo Pack, it comes with three batteries. So you've already got three batteries for your new action camera. Check this bad boy out. Oh, it holds all three batteries just like that. Look at how slim it is. It's like a super slim, really slick case. It's got a USB-C charging port right there, charges this whole bad boy up and charges all three of your batteries. You can press that right there to see the status of your batteries. And what's even crazier is that this supports fast charging also. Three batteries in there and it takes 56 minutes to get all three of them up to 80% and two hours and all three are fully charged. I have for sure never seen a charging case this slick. Actually, I have and it's the DJI wireless mics. They also are in a very similar just really slick case. We're gonna talk more about these in a minute because they're, they are important. Next up in the adventure combo set is their selfie stick, which is now my new favorite selfie stick. You've got the GoPro feet on the end there. It starts off at 0.3 meters, but then check this out. Whoa, I can't even get my arms. There we go. 1.5 meters this stick goes to, and then and then it gets all the way down to 0.3 meters. Oh, with this stick, they are going to be releasing a feature for this camera. Now it's not out yet. I can't test this out yet, but they're going to have a feature where you can film with this camera. They said skiing and snowboarding, which which I think when I tell you what it is, you'll understand it. But you'll be able to film on your selfie stick, and you know normally you have a stick in the shot like this because it's an action camera so you see the stick, you're gonna be able to take that footage, upload it to the DJI app, and it's gonna use AI to see where the stick is and then just blend it out. I asked them if I could try it while skateboarding and they said, no, it's for snowboarding and skiing only. So the Adventure Combo Pack has the camera, you've got that sweet battery case, you've got that sweet invisible selfie stick, you get one of their, their flat mounts, which kind of just adhesives to things and then has the, the action camera feet on there. You get two of their new magnetic mounts. Again, these are plastic now, they've got metal feet, but they're actual plastic adapters. You get two of their thumb screws, which are really good thumb screws. I like seeing that, good thumb screws. Uh, it also comes comes with this guy, which is a vertical cage. And this is a, it's an interesting cage. You kind of just lift this latch and that opens the cage, like kind of spreads it enough. And that's how you get the camera in. And once it is in there, I just lock down that latch there and I got my buttons up top. I've got my button on this side. I can get access to that door, but check this side out. I now have that same magnetic mount on the side of this cage. And now once the camera is inside this cage, I can vertically mount this camera. So now the camera is in a vertical position and now I can cruise around and I don't know, film Instagram reels or TikToks or whatever. You guys know that, that I'm not a fan of having to film vertically, but if you do have to film vertically, there's something that calls for you to film vertically. It is nice to have a cage 
where uh, you can facilitate that. Okay, that is the adventure combo pack. Again, that is 439 for that. Let's uh, let's jump into the resolutions and frame rates that the Osmo Action 3 can accomplish. The Osmo Action 3 is sporting a one over 1.7 inch sensor, which is a little bit larger than a one half inch sensor. And paired with that sensor is a 155 degree ultra wide lens, which is an equivalent of 12.7 millimeters. And then with that, this camera breaks that down into three field of view options. You can have ultra wide, which is like super bulby and very, very wide. Then you can move up to more of the normal action camera look, which is the wide. And then you can move to standard with D-warp, which removes all fisheye. Like all the lines that were super bulby just go bloop, and they're perfectly straight. And then as for resolution and frame rate, this camera can do 4K at up to 120 seconds. It can do 2.7K also up to 120 seconds. And then you drop down to 1080 to accomplish 240 frames a second, which is super slow-mo. I don't use 240 very often, but I am kind of bummed that you can't do 2.7K at 240. The 1080 isn't terrible looking at 240, but it, it would be better if it was 2.7K. And then for stabilization on this camera, it is exactly the same as the Action 2. There's three stabilization modes. First off is rock steady, and that is just super, super stable mode that goes all the way through the range, all the way up to 4K 120. And this is horizon balancing, which we can do up to 4K 60, where we can tilt the camera up to 45 degrees, and the horizon stays perfect level your shot stays perfectly level once you go past 45 then the shot rotates but horizon balancing up to 4k 60 and then when we drop down to 2.7k 60 we go into horizon steady mode and that is where the camera can do a full 360 and the horizon stays upright so this is full 360 lock horizon steady mode no matter where the camera goes the uh, the horizon stays upright and the last big thing we need to touch on is an audio test with this action camera. It's got that, that windproof microphone on the bottom there. How does it do with wind? Okay, here is an audio test for the Osmo Action 3. This is what the audio sounds like just out of camera. There's almost no wind in this little cul-de-sac that I'm in right now. About 10 miles per hour of wind. How does the Osmo Action 3 handle the wind? How well do you pick up my voice? How much is it canceling out the background noise? Let's get going a little faster. All right, now at 15 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour, Osmo Action 3. How does the audio sound? It's, I mean, this is quite a bit of wind. And then let's get all the way to full speed here. Oh yeah, that's lots of wind. That is 20 miles an hour right there. How does the Osmo Action 3 handle 20 miles per hour of wind? Again, this would be considered like an extreme case of wind. Then one more time with an audio test, I now have the DJI wireless mic kit that plugs directly into the side of the Action 3, no adapter needed. Now, how does this sound? This is the audio with, with pretty much no movement. I do know this mic kit very well. Made a whole video on this mic kit. Click up there to go watch it. But let's see how it handles wind while attached to the Action 3. Here we go with a little bit of wind test. And right off the bat there, there's 10 miles an hour. How does the DJI wireless mic on a lav sound at 10 miles an hour? This is just such a killer way to be able to pick up audio and the fact that it goes straight into this action camera is, it just seems absurd. It seems absurd that an action camera would have its own wireless mic kit, but, but again, DJI makes both, so why not? And now we are at 15 miles an hour. How does the audio sound at 15 miles an hour on the Osmo Action 3 with wireless kit from DJI, DJI wireless kit? Yeah, DJI wireless kit. Let's go full speed. All right, there's full speed. There's 20 miles an hour on the DJI wireless mic plugged into the DJI Osmo Action 3. What's the audio sound like? If it sounds even decent at all, which I kind of think it will because I've got a wind muff on this thing. It is a really good microphone. Uh, this might be like the killer combination. That wireless mic test is bananas. This microphone sounds so good when plugged into this camera. And to do so, we are taking that little side door and you just pops off really simply. We take out this guy. We've got the receiver with the USB-C connector right on it. We just take the Osmo Action 3 and it plugs directly into it. There's no adapters, there's nothing else to do. You just take the receiver straight out of the wireless mic kit, plug it straight into the camera and then boom, you now have a wireless mic that you can you can walk around and record with. Okay, that is the Osmo Action 3. That is everything that is new with this camera. What are the cons? What are the things that, that I look at this camera and I go, ah, I wish it had that. And the very first thing is those frame rates. 4K 120 frames a second is amazing, but I would love to see that 2.7K be able to hit 240 frames a second. That's that's kind of a bummer. Again, I don't use it often, but, but when I do use it, I would want it to be more than 1080 because again, I'm gonna upsample everything to 4K anyways, and the 1080, 
1080 just doesn't look as good as a 2.7K and I'm feeling greedy. Uh, the next thing is audio. This, this kit obviously makes the audio bananas good, but without it, if you're just running the action camera alone, it does pick up a lot of wind still. I, I don't know exactly how this acoustic wind microphone on the bottom works. I'm sure it's doing a great job, but action cameras are action cameras. We all expect these little tiny holes in cameras to behave like, to behave and sound like a big microphone like this, but you know, this is just the microphone and this is the entire camera and the microphones are just little holes inside this camera. So expectations need to be reasonable and it is nice that they do offer this as well. So those are all the cons. Lastly though, will this camera actually overheat? Now DJI is saying it will not overheat up to 4K 60. The battery will run out, it will not overheat. And we're gonna find out if that's true and at 4K 120, how fast does this camera overheat? And to do that, I made an entire dedicated overheating video on this camera and, and a couple others. Click the box on the screen for the overheating video and click the other box for, you know, another very interesting camera that was also released today. You guys rock. Thank you so much for watching. And again, click, click one of these boxes. I will, I will see you guys soon.